After years and years of travel and visiting nearly 80 countries in my time, I'm now going to answer your questions from those journeys. Joining me in this video is Kat, my trusty sidekick. Welcome back, Kat. Thank you. And she is going to be reading those questions out that you guys have sent in. Do I need to? Yes. Hot girls in the videos get more views. So let's crack into it with question number one. First of all, thank you to everyone that sent these questions in uh, through Instagram. If you don't have me on Instagram, this is my username and this is the best way to reach out. I reply to every comment anywhere on YouTube, but if you want a more in-depth chat, drop me a message on Instagram and yeah, I can answer your questions on there. But Kat, come on, first question, come on, what is it? How do you choose your countries? Is it random or...? How do I choose my countries? Yeah. So. Um, I like to go to the unknown countries, basically, if you've seen my videos. Um, just come back from Iraq. I obviously went to Syria. And, you know, I go to places that tourists don't normally go to. Got a big Africa plan uh, coming up in January. And, sorry. <laughs> and then I just go. I just go. I don't plan much. Don't do much research. Just a little bit. And then we go for it, go for it from there. Okay, next question. Come on, keep these firing. Have you ever use tinder when you travel tinder is one of the best ways to meet people when you're traveling not just to meet a date or a hookup or whatever you want to do um but for example i'll give you a little story when i landed in sydney about six years ago absolutely petrified never did any traveling in my time one of the best ways to get involved and get to meet people is to go on tinder top right in your bio look i'm a tourist i'm here for a week or whatever can someone show me around and you'll be surprised how many girls or boys, whatever you want to meet, uh, will reach out and say, yeah, crack on. I met two girls in Sydney just for a few drinks. Nothing went from it. Yeah, you know, you can meet many friends on Tinder. Have you ever met any friends on Tinder? You? <laughs> <laughs> what makes your content different? than other YouTubers? Good question, good question. And um, well, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, they're way different than other people because um, I show the reality of traveling and um, not a lot of people do this. In fact, hardly anyone. They show only the positives of traveling, you know, all these nice places and, you know, all these positive stories that they're having. But honestly, traveling, 80% is great. 20% is hell on earth. I'll probably say 25%. It is most one of the most stressful things you can do. It's exhausting. I mean, you've traveled with me, you know what it's like. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's a bloody nightmare traveling. So I like to show all sides of travel, <laughs> the good and the bad, and you know, not a lot of people do that. And you know, thank you to the people that understand that and respect that. A lot of people complain and say, oh, you moaning British wanker, all this shit. I'm like, mate, this is it. This is traveling. You know what I mean? These, this is what happens in these countries. And if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But yeah, there you go. Next question. What is the purpose of your videos? The purpose of my videos. Another good question. Basically, I started YouTube to basically create memories because I've traveled in the past. I did a big year away about six years ago and I went to... 15 to 20 countries i don't remember any of it i got a few photos on my old phone but that was it like no videos no nothing i met so many people and they've messaged me like two or three years later and i don't even know who they are like can't remember you mate sorry so um the main reason for getting into youtube was to actually create like a story so i could look back in 20 30 years and look you know show these my like, kids or whatever say look look what I did here and you know it's it's for memories that is pretty much the main reason I started YouTube so I could look back 20 30 years and um, you know relive those moments and how brutal those are as well all right so next one where is the hottest woman hottest women Portu nah <laughs> it's not Portuguese I've not been to Portugal so I wouldn't know um, We'll go to Portugal one day, but I'm guessing Portuguese are up there. But um, for me, it would either be Syrian. 
there were some stunners in Syria. Absolute 10 out of 10s. Obviously, Japan, Philippines. Oh, there's many. Albanian. Oh, there were some, there were some fitties in Albania. Um, even she agrees. I agree. So, yeah. yeah. Where is the best place for a night out? The best place for nightlife, night out, night on the Raz. That like would... a lad's holiday. Blackpool. <laughs> Blackpool, of course. <laughs> Me and Bob went to Blackpool, had a great time. Nah, that was terrible. It was terrible. Um, the best place for a night out. Australia, Melbourne. Simple as that. Tokyo, Japan as well. Where else? Yeah, that, those are the main two. Those, Seoul, South Korea, very good. Plymouth? Plymouth, nah. Uh, next one is your top three best country and worst. <sighs> top three best countries. I've always said Japan's number one. Um, just for that culture shock, friendliness of people, cleanliness, safe. Loved it. Um, too expensive though. Second would probably be Philippines because it's got it all. Beaches, attractive women, um, the mountains in the north, the weather, beautiful. Philippines, number two. Number three, I'd probably say Australia because I lived there for six, seven months. Um, incredible. Australia, that's a place I could live. Like if I was to move England today and they said, where would you go? I'd say Australia. It's got everything you need. It's amazing. Australia is huge. Obviously, if you don't know that, it's massive and it's brilliant. I love Australia. And the top three worst, sorry. So, well, I've not got three, but the two that I don't, would never go back to is Egypt. Like, I've never go back to Egypt. The stress we went through in Cairo, it was a nightmare. Like, sexually harassed, people trying to steal your stuff, um, scammers everywhere, touts. Cairo Giza was horrendous, like so dirty, dead animals everywhere. And Brunei, I'm sorry people of Brunei, but your country, you know, there's not much to do, super small. Um, there's nothing to really do there. Yeah, Brunei would probably be number two. I can't think of any other countries that I'd say I'd never go back to. Um, so yeah, Egypt. The thing is, I only went to Cairo and where else did we go? Siwa, which is on the west. And that wasn't that good either. So, yeah, Egypt and uh, Brunei. So, what was your best place for food? Food? Yeah. India. That's it. Say no more. India. Best, best place on the planet for food. Chicken curries from there? And you name it, they've got it all. The best flavours, the best dishes, India food, number one. Okay. How do you overcome your fear of travelling? Good question. So there's a lot of people that message me that are scared to travel, and I completely understand, especially if you're young, because um, I was exactly the same. My first solo travel experience was Australia, and I left my friends in Thailand, and I flew to Sydney, let me tell you, I was petrified. I booked a hostel, and I, that was the first ever hostel I've stayed in. <coughs> and um, basically, I walked into that hostel, and there was four girls in there. And they were friendly. They were talking to me, like, well, where are you from, blah, blah, blah. And I explained to them, I'm from, from Plymouth. I'm here traveling, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. They, they went on a night out. And I was just like, oh, my God, like... Um, I didn't want to like ask to join them. I was hoping they would. So it was really awkward. And you've got to go downstairs and into the common area and speak to people. And obviously I'm quite confident as it is. Am I boring you? <laughs> I'm a confident person as it is, but it's hard. It's, it's tricky. Like you go into a hostel, there's a lot of, you know, foreign people. You're a foreigner yourself. And it's like, it's really hard, honestly. But once you overcome that fear and you speak to people and you realize you're all the same, you're all doing the same thing, you'll meet some incredible people and you overcome that fear. I got to the point where I was going to a new hostel and I was looking forward to it. So you meet some incredible people and each hostel you go to, um, it'll continue. So yeah, I was terrified at first, terrified, but you overcome that fear. The more you do it, the more you get involved and speak to people. Poor boy. Yeah, it was rough. 
What was your longest travel relationship? Oh God. Um, you know, there's been like flings and stuff like that, but the longest one and only one would be an Indian girl. And people are probably surprised to hear that. They think India is quite conservative, which it is. But yeah, so I dated an Indian girl for like six weeks and we met in a Rajasthani desert on a camel. <laughs> and yeah, we spent six weeks together, went to Taj Mahal, you know, all that stuff. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's your longest travel relationship? I do not have one. Yeah. What is your most dangerous travel stories? Most dangerous travel stories, I made a video on this separately. It was the video I posted last week. Top five most dangerous. Um, there was another five, but I don't think they're worth telling. Um, yeah, there's there's been a few, but I made a video on that last time. Check it out. <laughs> Why do you go to the countries that are advised against all travels? Good question. Um, I always say to these places, for example, just got back from Iraq. The population of Iraq, I'm not too sure what it is. I'll put it here. <laughs> so the UK government think every single person in this country is going to be bad. No, it's the 1% like it is in England. You know what I mean? Every country's got bad people. Excuse me, but 99% full of great people, positive people. And I like to go to these countries and show to people, look, it's full of normal people living a normal life, being positive. And I like to film it and show this to the world. So yeah, I like to go to these places. Um, that's it really, yeah. How do you find your YouTube journey so far? Yes, my YouTube journey has been like this, whoa, up and down, up and down. It's not ever been like consistently. So now I'm trying to keep it like a steady flow of content, basically. Hence videos like this. Um, my journey started, you could say three years ago, but um, so I did a lot of Indian videos, Bangladesh, and that's when it peaked. I got a lot of attention. But then the pandemic happened, so it went like this and went rock bottom. I didn't upload a single video to nearly a year, so like 10 months. And then I went Africa, so obviously Africa, spike of um, audience. And then I left Africa and I spent six months basically recovering um, and spending it at home here in Plymouth. So yet again, dropped down and I didn't upload for like seven months or something. So you lose that audience and they lose interest in you, basically. Um, so then obviously it started again. I went to Pakistan, huge peak. And then I left Pakistan. And ever since then, it's been like a steady sort of flow. But yeah, if you look, if you're working on YouTube, it needs to be a consistent, you know, flow of videos. And you've got to retain those audience because you could lose them like I have. And hopefully you get more back basically good question are you yourself on camera or is it a character <laughs> i've met people as well and that have watched my videos and within two minutes they're like you're exactly the same as you are on your videos everything you see on video is how i am in real life it's not an act it's not a character i'm just a typical british guy Typical lad traveling around, being himself, you know, drinking, partying, getting involved with the locals, moaning, complaining, having a laugh, you know, all these things. It's who I am in real life. So it's not an act. What you see is what you get, basically. I can assure that it is the right thought. <laughs> Are you good with saving? Like, you, you do not buy things to save for your travels or... Right. Yeah, so I'm really good with saving money, basically. If you've seen my videos, you'll notice I have two pairs of shoes, a white pair of Converse and a black pair. I've had them close to five years or something. I've worn them in countless countries. They're fine. Why would I buy a new pair of shoes? I'll wear them, I've seen my flip-flops when I go to countries as well. They're like a quid, I'll buy a new pair. Um, and my clothes, like, you'll see this. I wear this in so many videos. Just don't waste money on clothes, but on like materialistic things, basically. I used to, years ago, I'd waste 
thousands and thousands on clothes and just pointless things like cars and things to impress other people when I don't really need it. So if that's my advice to people that want to save to go travel, stop wasting your money on materialistic things that will make you feel better for like a minute or two or a day. And then it's like, why do I have this? Like, there's no reason for it. It's better to save your money and put it towards something else that's more important, if it's traveling or a house, whatever. So a good question. Last question. Bring it on, Kat. Do the honors. Bring honest. it on. <laughs> what is coming after YouTube? What? When am I coming after <laughs> YouTube? What's my plan after YouTube? Yeah. What is your plan after YouTube? My plan after YouTube is, basically, I get tons of people messaging me saying, Ben, any chance I can come with you on these next adventures? Whether it be a dangerous country or a normal country, like a lot of tourists go. So my plan in next year is to basically run my own travel company. And I'm going to be taking you guys, if you want to come, on a journey that you wouldn't go on your own, basically. So I'm going to be bringing a group of people where you're going to meet loads of people around the world. And it's going to be five to ten people. And she's going to be my receptionist. She's going to... Receptionist? Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you next year. No, I'm joking. But basically, yeah, I'm going to be running my own travel company because I can't be backpacker Ben in my 30s. Like, it's going to kill me off. And I can't walk around saying, oh, backpacker Ben from YouTube. That's just weird. Um, so, yeah, I'm 29 at the moment. I've always said when I hit 30, I'll do something new. So I'm still going to be doing YouTube videos, but I'm not going to be doing long, you know, relentless journeys for months on end and going to these crazy countries and doing these crazy adventures. I'm going to be taking other people with me and, you know, showing them how they can travel to these places. But, um, yeah, I'm still going to be doing videos, but basically not for as long. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's the plan, basically. And, yeah, that's it. Sound good? Yeah, but I don't want to be your receptionist. Yeah, that's fine. We'll talk about that. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions. If you've got any more, message me on Instagram or comment them below and I will answer them. I always do. And yeah, the next video is quite interesting. It's a story on how I basically became a YouTuber and how everything formed into what it is today. And yeah, it's quite interesting. And that's going to be posted next week. So I'll see you guys in that next video. Thanks again, Kat, for doing the questions. It's always a pleasure, Backpacker Ben. See, Backpacker Ben. I don't be called Backpacker Ben Backpacker when I'm like ben. 32, 33. Um, so yeah, see you guys in the next video.